Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where we take awesome out of the box. Tito James here. In this one, we're going to be talking about the OnePlus Nord 2 5G. So I do want to start off this video by addressing the elephant in the room. I'm sure you've heard about the issue with this smartphone down in India. Yes, it did happen. OnePlus conducted their own investigation and found that it was caused by external factors and that this was an isolated case. So I will be giving them the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, let's unbox this phone. So here we go, guys. This is the box of the OnePlus Nord 2 5G. I'm sure you know the design na to, but I appreciate how they kind of differentiate the ones with their signature red on their flagship devices and the teal on this one. Now open up the box and you're immediately greeted by the device itself. The team over at Digital Walker sent us the blue haze color variant that also sports 8GB of RAM and 12GB of storage. Though you do have an option of going with the slightly more expensive Gray Sierra version with 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. Now aside from that, you have the standard set of accessories that we're pretty used to seeing already. You have the silicone case with that familiar pattern that we've been seeing with other Nord offerings. The documents that include a welcome note from the team plus stickers and a SIM ejector pin. And lastly, on the bottom of the box, you have the signature red OnePlus charging cable and a 65 watt warp charger. Okay guys, so you know the drill by now. Let's talk about the price. And sinabi ko kanina, there's two variants available for the OnePlus Nord 2 5G. There's the Blue Haze one with 8GB of RAM, 128GB of storage for 21,990 pesos. And then there's the Gray Sierra version, 12GB of RAM, 256GB of storage, priced at 25,990 pesos. Now, a little tip, if you didn't know, you really have to choose which variant that you want to get because the storage is non-expandable. Anyway, let's take a closer look at the Nord 2 5G. And actually, in terms of design, the Nord 2 5G felt very similar to the first version of this device, and that's because it's built nearly the same. It's sandwiched by Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and back. It has a plastic frame, but this is a bit heavier at 189 grams compared to the 184 on the original Nord. And hula ko lang to, it's because of the camera array which is a little bit wider. Siguro naman 5 grams yan, so I guess that's the added weight. So other than that, it feels the same in the hand with the right amount of curves on its back, making it easier to hold when in use. We've also taken a look at the Nord CE recently and Medyo na bad trip kami na tinanggal nila yung notification slider doon but thankfully meron to, it's on the right side of the phone along with the power button. The volume rocker is found on the left side and of course to round out the tour of this device's button and ports, you have the speaker, USB-C port, and access to dual SIM tray slots on the bottom of this device. Like I said, you only have space for two SIM cards here no expandable storage. So move on naman tayo sa display. It's at 6.43 inches at full HD plus resolution and they're using their fluid AMOLED display here which basically means yung refresh rate niya is at 90 hertz. Now personally for me, okay naman siya. It hits all the marks that I usually look for in this type of screen. Vivid colors, a great contrast ratio, which is always a plus since mas nanonood ako ng mga video sa phone ko more than anything. And just like the Nord CE, meron din siyang stereo speakers. They're not the best sounding ones and wala din siyang headphone jack, which is kind of sad. But anyway, here's a sound test. And of course, since AMOLED panel yung gamit nila, you do have access to an in-display fingerprint scanner. It's decently accurate. So for now, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Okay, so onto the cameras. And I am pretty excited about this one because the main camera actually has OIS. It's at 50 megapixels at an aperture of f1.8. It's backed by a Sony IMX776 sensor. But the one thing about it is, again, it has optical image stabilization. And I just want to remind you guys, na kahit na yung flagship nila, yung OnePlus 9, doesn't have OIS. As for the selfie camera, it's at 32 megapixels at an aperture of f2.5. So we are missing one camera compared to the original Nord, which had an 8 megapixel ultrawide. Pero Okay na rin. So medyo quanti pa lang yung sample photos na nakuha namin since we're preparing for ECQ but here they are. Okay. 
Okay, so pag-usapan naman natin yung internals ng phone na to, and this is actually one of the places where OnePlus made a huge change since they jumped from Qualcomm to MediaTek. So the Nord 2 5G features a Dimensity 1200 AI processor and again, two available configurations for this device with up to 12GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. So kamusta nga ba yung performance niya? And as you can see on screen, we ran a few benchmark tests to see how it performs. It pushed out some great numbers and you can really see the difference when it comes to the multi-core score of Geekbench 5. Almost double the results niya, but when you jump over to compute, you can see Sobrang iwan na yung original Nord at saka yung Nord CE. Of course, there's more tests to be done. I still have to use this as my daily driver. It looks promising though I know that there are some of you who are going to be disappointed that they went Team MediaTek. For the battery, we are getting a 4,500mAh one. So a little below the 5,000 standard that we're seeing more often these days. Now the good thing here is that though it supports 65 watt warp charge which OnePlus advertises that it's going to go from 0 to 100% in about half an hour. As for software, the OnePlus Nord 2 5G runs on Android 11 with Oxygen OS 11.3 out of the box. So there you go guys, that's pretty much it for this quick look at the OnePlus Nord 2 5G. I'm really excited to try this out more, especially the cameras, but I don't know how I'm going to be doing that since naka ECQ na tayo ulit, but I'll find a way without breaking the rules and regulations, but yeah. For me personally, I think this is already an upgrade, but of course, again, we still have to run some tests to see if what you're paying for this smartphone, again, up to 25,990 pesos is going to be worth it. Okay, outro. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, sub to the channel, make sure you hit that notification bell. If you have any questions, leave them down below, and I'll try my best to get to them as soon as I can. For all the latest in tech, head to Unbox.ph+, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, listen to our podcast on Spotify. Yeah, there you go. My name is Tita James. Peace, God bless. See you guys next time. And please, please stay safe.